If you're new to the world of Steam Decks, congratulations on your purchase. These versatile machines can do everything from cleaning and deodorizing your carpets to tackling tough stains and grime on your hard surfaces. I had an AI try to write the script for this video, and it thought the Steam Deck meant like a steamer, like a carpet cleaner. So I'm glad that I still have my job. My job's safe. Also, why would I ever talk like that? Congratulating you for spending money? The actual Steam Deck is readily available now. Long gone are the days of long wait times. They're practically giving them away at this point. I figure a lot of people are gonna be getting these things as Christmas gifts this year because they're more readily available. Maybe people are gonna be spending their gift cards on it or, or spending their hard earned income. Or maybe you just like watching videos on stuff before you get it. I understand you're excited. Steam Decks can do a lot of things, so I think it's worth talking about the first things you should do with your brand new Steam Deck. Some things to set up, some settings to look out for, and a couple of tips to help you get the most out of your new device. This video is sponsored by Casetify. Here's your coffee. Oh, thank you so much. Is that your phone? Oh, yeah, it's fine. You don't rock a case on your phone. No, it's, it's fine, I'm careful with it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> ah! Oh my God, I'm so sorry. It just slipped out of my hands. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Is your phone okay? Of course, dude, it's in a case. Wow, that's awesome. Let me try. Why would you do that? Casetify's EcoShock technology provides 20% more protection in their new iPhone Impact series. Protection of up to 11 and a half feet, five times military standard, meaning it's been drop tested 130 times. and it's still slim enough to fit right in your pocket and be protected. Over 2,000 prints to choose from and complete the look with a phone strap, screen protector, and more. Visit casetify.com slash wolfden right now and get 15% off your entire order today. All right, I gave in, I'm a case guy now. Mine has clouds. Oh, I'm so proud of you, buddy. Hey, yo, I got an order for a Mr. Uh, eat em ups, eat em ups. I don't know, guy had an X on the phone. I didn't understand a word. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's down the hall. It's a it's different, different guy. guy mistake. Oh, okay, thanks, guys. Let me see. Didn't have a case. Ah, uh, no he case. He didn't have a case. He didn't have a case. Yeah, no case. No case. Oh, get out of here, man! This thing might just be the most versatile handheld on the market today. So it could be a little daunting. With so many options, what should you do first? Well, the first thing you should do is say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I love it, it's, it's great. Thank you, thanks. Then check the Steam Deck compatibility list before you get your hopes up. Every game on Steam will have a little icon in the Steam Deck compatibility section. It's a lot easier to see on the Steam Deck itself because the little icon is a lot more prominent on the screen. It's got it in the game info tab. This one is a little exclamation point to say it's playable, but there's some issues with it. And then it lists out the issues. A lot of times when it just says playable, it could be something as simple as having small text. So take playable with a grain of salt, read it, and most of the times you'll probably be fine. The only ones to look out for are the unplayable ones. Basically every game that I've wanted to play on this thing, I've just booted up and it's worked just fine for the most part. A lot of the games that I play are marked as unknown and they all seem to work just fine. The only things to really look out for are games that maybe only work well with a mouse and keyboard or games that have multiplayer specifically with a prominent anti-cheat software. A lot of anti-cheats don't work that well with the Steam Deck's architecture. There is a website called protondb.com or protondatabase.com, which was very popular before the Steam Deck came out and not so popular anymore. I don't really see many people talking about it, but it does give you a more detailed list of why certain games don't work right. And if a game isn't shown as supported, or if it says unknown, users will vote on it on this website and tell you what exactly might be wrong with it and how to fix it. 
but sometimes the fixes can be a major pain in the ass to do. And some of these games probably don't deserve their user voted ratings. So I just like to use the official Steam ratings. And if it's a game that I already have, I just like to try it for myself. Another thing that you can do before even getting your Steam Deck is to just wish list everything. Don't buy things right away. If you're not gonna play it for a while, just throw it on your wish list. Games go on sale on Steam very frequently. So wish listing it will get you notified when something actually goes on sale. I use this for games that I wanna play, but not necessarily right now. Something I can wait on to see when it goes on sale, then I can maybe save a little bit of money. I'd also say that make sure that cloud saves on your PC are turned on and there's no save data conflicts or anything. Make sure that the important games that you really wanna play, that you have a save file for, make sure those save files are already uploaded to the cloud. It should be set that way by default, but I would double check for those important games. I think one of the Steam Deck's best features is the ability to bounce between playing a game on the computer or portably on a Steam Deck and cloud saves help make that possible. And they work really, really well, pretty much seamlessly. So make sure that the cloud saves are turned on on your PC and that they're turned on on the Steam Deck. You see mine says cloud saves up to date here. And if you go to the Steam settings, you can go down to cloud, enable Steam Cloud. And in my experience, this has worked for every single game that I've wanted to play. The first thing that you should do when you get this thing out of the box is update it. I'm sure you were gonna do that anyway, but it's very important with the Steam Deck because when this thing first came out, it was buggy as all hell, and they were making very rapid improvements with constant updates. In fact, in the last video I made on this thing, the video on the Steam Deck dock, there was an issue where there could be nothing displaying on the external display. The resolution would get locked to an unsupported resolution and then there's just nothing you could do on that display. And right after I posted that video, the official Steam Deck account on Twitter reached out to me and told me that they pushed an update to help fix that. It was like a safe mode that reset the external display resolution. They're constantly listening to feedback and improving where they can. So check back pretty frequently. In fact, I updated it last night and there was another update today. The other day, somebody asked me which version of the Steam Deck they should get, the 64 gigabyte, the 256 gigabyte, or the 512 gigabyte. And I said, it really doesn't matter. I got the 256 gigabyte model because at the time when it was announced, it was unclear whether or not the base model would have upgradable internal storage, but they all do. So it really doesn't matter. You can always upgrade it anyway or get a micro SD card or something. First, no matter which one you got, you should throw a micro SD card in there. Sure, it will be slower than the internal storage, but honestly, not by much. Micro SD cards are perfectly capable of running most of the games that I would play on this thing fast enough where I would never notice. But if you want the absolute fastest load times, you're gonna have to upgrade the internal storage, which is pretty easy. This thing was built to be modular and easily fixable. You can see all of the screws right here. It's pretty easy to open. So don't be too intimidated. I'd say definitely just use a micro SD card first but if you are sick of the 64 gigabyte base model, don't be afraid to pop that baby open. Now it's time to download your games. Don't download every single game in your Steam library. You're not gonna play all of those games. Don't waste valuable storage space. It's time to come to terms with yourself like the rest of us did. You wasted your money. Whenever I need to download something on the Switch, I start the download and then immediately put the Switch to sleep and it downloads while it's sleeping. Some people believe that this helps the download go faster. I do not recommend doing this on a Steam Deck though. I've done this a couple of times and the download has just stopped and I'll come back to my Steam Deck thinking I'm ready to play my game and it'll be right where it left off and I'll have to continue to wait for the download. If you've got good Wi-Fi, most of these games don't take too long to download. I recommend leaving the thing on with the screen on while you're downloading important stuff. You can even change it in the settings so that the display will never go to sleep and the system won't go to sleep while it's trying to download your stuff. It should be able to download your stuff perfectly fine, but it doesn't work that well. I'd also recommend just frequently checking and making sure that there are no updates available. Pretty much every single time I turn this thing on, 
it says there's an update right here on this screen. So keep it updated so that you don't have your play times stalled by updates and downloads. This thing has not one, not two, but four extra back buttons, and they're not set to anything by default, so you have to set them yourself. Normally, on a controller like this, I would set them to the thumbstick clicks, because playing a game like Call of Duty, when you wanna do a melee attack, you can't really press the thumbstick in with any sort of precision without influencing a direction, but this game doesn't have Call of Duty, so right now, I don't have them set to anything. This is actually something that you do per game. So right here I have MU deck, and here I can add a command to R4, which is the back right one, and it could be a whole keyboard apparently. Can I do like a modifier key? Let's see. So I think now it's both control and F. That way I can map it in MU deck to like fast forward. That would be cool. Turns out you don't even need to do that in emulation station because you can just do select and R2. The Steam Deck usually blows me away with how well it performs with these graphically intensive games. And if you're anything like me, you're a nerd then, you'd probably like to see just how well the Steam Deck is performing. So what you can do is turn on that little FPS toggle in the top left corner there. You turn it on by clicking the three dot button on the right side, go to where the battery is, I guess that's performance, and go all the way to the bottom, show perf overlay in Steam. You can change the amount of stuff it shows in the corner over there by changing the performance overlay level. Mine's on one because I just want FPS, but if you want all that, you can go to two, you can go to three for all that, and you can go to four if you want to look like you're like digital foundry or something. So yeah, I just leave mine on one the whole time. Usually you can tell when a game is stuttering, but this will tell you just how much it's stuttering. This is helpful when tweaking a game that might not necessarily be deck verified or messing with emulation options. Speaking of emulation, it's really easy to get emulators on this thing. Emu Deck is purpose built to be as simple as possible and it puts everything from Atari all the way up to GameCube and even PlayStation 2 emulators on here and it lays out all of your ROMs in this nice neat little package. It turns the Steam Deck into the best emulator you could have. It's a little annoying that the Steam Deck formats your micro SD card to a Linux format because that makes transferring your ROMs over a bit annoying. There's a software by Paragon Software that allows your Windows computer to read a Linux file system. That program costs money, but they allow a five day free trial and this won't take you more than a day. So there you go, have fun with that. I have all of my ROMs on Dropbox and they sync between all of my different devices. I put them on the micro SD card one time and any stragglers that I have left over, I just log onto the Linux desktop on this thing. I go into the web browser and I go to my Dropbox and I download the individual ROMs when I need them. The Linux desktop is how you get MUDEC on here. You just go to mudeck.com in the browser and the setup is super easy. It walks you through it, but if you need help, I'll link a video in the corner here anyway. Don't be intimidated by that Linux desktop either. It could be very useful. It, it's your friend, but it could be a little annoying to navigate for more than like 10 minutes. You can use the touchpad on here, but it could be a bit annoying. So I'd recommend just plugging in a mouse and keyboard whenever you're gonna be in there for a long period of time. And that is easy to do, but you'll need a dongle or a dock for the extra USB ports in order to plug those in. But the Linux desktop will allow you to download any Linux app that includes emulators, browsers, hell, even Spotify is on there. And all of these can be added to Steam as a non-Steam game, so you won't have to go back to the Linux desktop in order to open them. They'll just be in the Steam OS right here. Like my Dolphin emulator, that's a standalone for some reason. MU Deck is technically a non-Steam game. The Chrome web browser, Discord. It's also how you currently get Game Pass on here or Xbox Cloud Gaming. Microsoft has a whole walkthrough on how to get Game Pass to work on here. It's pretty complicated and a little bit annoying. If you wanna just do it the easy way, you can just go into the Linux desktop, open up the web browser and just go to xbox.com slash play. And then you're like ready to go. Oh, the controller doesn't work. 
We tried. It's kind of worth it to do it the right way though, so that Xbox Game Pass shows up as an app in Steam OS. It's just cloud gaming, but it works awesome. It's definitely worth it to play some Forza with Game Pass instead of buying it outright just to have it on Steam. And if you'd like to use your Xbox controller to play Game Pass on your Steam Deck, feel free. That works just fine. A lot of game controllers are compatible with this. Xbox, PlayStation 5, even Joy-Cons are compatible with the Steam Deck. And the controller mapping is perfectly fine right out of the box for the most part. Of course, it depends on the type of game that you're playing. If it's like a mouse and keyboard game, you're gonna have to remap some controls yourself. Some games only allow you to use one controller at a time and they get confused if you have multiple controllers plugged in. This technically counts as a controller. So make sure you're starting the game with whatever controller you intend on using with it. I mean, the built-in controller is perfectly fine, but having an external controller could be a great way to play a game multiplayer with somebody else in tabletop mode. Although you can kick it up a notch by plugging this bitch into a TV or monitor, and you can do that very easily by just using a simple USB-C dongle or splurging and getting a dock. This essentially turns your Steam Deck into a Nintendo Switch. I have big plans to put this thing in that arcade cabinet that I have behind me because of how well this thing emulates games, how easy it is to navigate the UI with a controller, and how well the resolution scales with an external display. This thing would be the perfect brain for in there. If you find that your Steam Deck isn't powerful enough for a certain game, or there's a certain game that just isn't compatible with the Steam Deck, but you have it on your PC, you can remote into your PC through Steam. So you can play whatever you want on your couch. Couch time is completely uninterrupted by game time. Couch time! So what do you guys think? What's the first thing that you would do with your brand new Steam Deck once you take it out of the box? Is there anything that I left out? Any suggestions that you have that people should do? Or any tips and tricks that, that are must-haves? So leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter, or any and all of this other social media garbage. Hey, I stream on twitch.tv slash Wolfden every once in a while, usually at night, so make sure you check that out. You can ask me questions there and talk to me live in the chat. That's probably the best way to get in contact with me. Thank you, Casetify, for helping sponsor this video. Don't forget to check them out at the link in the description below. But of course, the most important things that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here and share this video with a friend, a friend who you know is getting one of these things really soon. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week. Pew, 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 pew.